Hello lovely people. In today's video, we will be talking about the latest Blockstrap update that has just released, which is version 2.8.0. This Blockstrap version introduces big changes to the overall UI, navigation, and features that it includes. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first noticeable change is the Blockstrap menu itself. Typically, you would see that there would be the Play Roblox shortcut and that there would be the Blockstrap menu shortcut. Now, it's all synced into one shortcut of Blockstrap. So all you have to do now is just type in the search, just Blockstrap, and you'll immediately go to Blockstrap, the new menu. Now, once you have the new menu, which is the latest version, version 2.8.0, you see that there are some minor changes before it would open up to the exact menu of Blockstrap. Now you have two options or three options. You have launch Roblox, which is the play Roblox shortcut, which is just simply launch Roblox with Blockstrap. You have configure settings, which will configure the settings that you normally have before with the Blockstrap menu. And then of course, seeing the wiki for help if you have any issues. So let's go to configure settings. Now that we're here, we can see that the UI has changed a bit. And whenever you move the UI and you exit out, I believe it saves the location. So that means if you move the UI to the left of the screen and you exit out and you go back in, then it'll open to the left of the screen. So that's one minor detail. Okay. Now let's talk about the new updates, new changes that they've had. So in the integrations tab, you have activity tracking, this is there before, and you can see what it does by clicking over here. But it basically just gives Blockstrap more information about your activity on like servers and all these other things. Yeah, activity tracking is about the server, what server you joined, the server stuff, information about the server and all the other things that would be involved with tracking your activity like Discord which presence. Second one is query server location which is basically getting the server location's IP address with IP info, which is a, it's an accurate IP address lookup site. So it uses your IP to tell your system which server you connected to to Roblox. So it could be in Tokyo, Japan, if the server's in Japan, would say if it's a European server, so if it's Frankfurt, or if it's a US server, this is how you can tell what server location and region that you've connected to. This wasn't here before, this was recently added as its own dedicated integration tab right here, unless they changed the name. I know it's added before, but they changed the name of it. Don't exit desktop app is basically if you leave a game, it'll fully close Roblox instead of taking you back into the app. So it would basically exit out of Roblox. It won't ask you if you want to go back to home and stuff like that. And here is Discord Rich Presence, which is show your game activity, which will show your game activity on Discord with Rich Presence. Like before, it would just be Roblox and it won't say the game. It won't say how long you played, who it's made by. But now with this show game activity, it'll show that in your Discord Rich Presence. Activity joining is a separate button that if you click, it'll use deep linking technology and it'll allow the person that clicked on join through that Rich Presence on Discord to join your exact Discord, uh, your exact Roblox server. The new addition is show Roblox account, which is exactly what the name suggests. So if you play, and you have your Discord Rich Presence on, it'll not only show you the game that you're playing, but it'll also show your account that you're playing on. So in the little circle at the bottom, it'll say playing on and then your name and your Roblox username with a headshot of your Roblox avatar. I don't know if this would be overwritten if a developer has changed that with their custom Blockstrap RPC in game, but that's a new integration. Of course, custom integrations that's still there and this basically means you will open another app 
when you open Roblox. So if I don't know, you have FPS Unlocker, like a separate app, or you have an auto clicker that you want to open automatically with Roblox, you can add that here, change the name, set the file location to the exe, and if you have any launch arguments that you want to add, then you can add that there. And of course, you can also select or deselect auto close when Roblox closes. So it closes that custom integration app when you close out of Roblox. Next is the bootstrapper setting, which is renamed and it's up there before it used to be somewhere down here, I believe. And this is the setting for, and this is the setting for block strap, the boots, bootstrapper. So it'll basically have all these right here prompt to confirm when launching another instance basically means that if you already have roblox open and you accidentally click a game on the website it'll not automatically kick you out of your current roblox session it'll ask you if you want to leave that session so i recommend enabling this just in case you accidentally open or click play on another game by accident and you didn't mean to allow use of unsupported roblox languages this is an optional feature but it's as the name states, you can use unsupported Roblox languages in the app. Force Roblox reinstallation basically just reinstalls Roblox the next time you run it with Blockstrap if there's any issues with the app and stuff like that. Next up is the mods folder, and there are some changes here as well. The compatibility settings is changed, so when you click on this, you will see that now it opens an official Windows menu, so it's configuring the Roblox client its properties do the windows thing by itself so you can see you can change the dpi settings you can disable full screen optimizations and all of that this used to be a setting but now it's right there oh well, death sound that's always been there mouse cursor you can change it to the default which is what you always have or 2013 which i like personally or the 2006 cartoony one old avatar editor menu background is the old i believe 2016 or whatever prior to 2020 like it states here the avatar background with the clothing racks and stuff like that on the desktop app emulate old character sounds is i believe just replaces the default walking sounds and all of that with old character sounds i've never used it personally and per preferred emoji type is basically the emojis that will show in the roblox app so if the default is tree emoji continue to windows 8 windows 10 11 or cat emoji which will basically change the emojis from if you were to put an angry face if it's cat emoji it'll be an angry cat face instead use custom font as self-explanatory you can use a custom font to change the font of the roblox app uh, for your client engine settings this is a new name it used to be called fast flags but they changed it to engine settings because it's settings for the engine itself and it's more user friendly to read and understand what it does so anti-aliasing quality honestly i don't know what it is i forgot what it is but set it to automatic that's the default you can disable player shape player shadows so you won't have any player shadows when you play the game so that would improve performance post-processing effects would also improve performance i believe and then disable terrain textures and frame rate, frame rate limit, which is your FPS. So if you have, or so if you use the default Roblox settings, which would be 60, I believe it was 60, 120, and 240, you can just leave this at zero and configure that in your Roblox settings, or you can change this to 240 or whatever amount you want um, to increase in your FPS count. Although, Sometimes it might actually make your device slower or have some network lag. So I would just recommend putting it at zero and changing your settings to 240 if it, your device supports that. Preferred lighting technology is basically the lighting technology that you would use in your game, which could be future lighting, voxel lighting, or I believe is shadow map. And that's just Roblox lighting technology. I would just recommend having it, having it to chosen by game because the game developers knows best on what you want uh, what they want their experience to be and what the lighting and stuff for it is made for because if a game is made for like old lighting styles but you make it futuristic it may look weird or it might be dark darker and stuff like that
preserver when preserver rendering quality i believe that this reduces the rendering quality like it says here but it'll also um, uh increase performance i think so it might not be the best option to have but it's there if you want it rendering mode i just always have this to automatic which you can change to whichever one of these texture quality is the texture quality in your roblox experiences and disable full screen title bar basically means that if you're on roblox and you're on full screen and you have your mouse at the top of the roblox app you would see that it would bring a gray bar down and this basically removes that so it doesn't have that interruption if you accidentally put your mouse at the top of the screen. Enable ability to hide GUIs. I love this. This is ex excellent for screenshots. You can remove billboard GUIs, screen GUIs, and even Roblox core GUIs. So you can have like just your Roblox avatar just right then and there so that you can take beautiful screenshots. Of course, this says you it only works if you're in the block strap group but i'll show you how you can change it so it will be in any group that you're currently in for this of course it's the block strap group by default but you can change it to be a group you own or a group that you're in already font size i recommend it at one that's just the font size for the roblox app for an escape menu version that's the escape menu version so currently now it's the default which is the new chrome ui which is the name that they call it which is the new top bar the circular top bar that people are complaining but also love which i personally love because of the simplicity of it and also the voice chat icon being on the top left instead of above the player's avatar but of course you can change this to the old 2015 menu 2020 menu which is the same thing as the vr menu i believe 2023 which is what we had before before this update so if you want the old escape menu you can go to that and then this is basically the current one right here is the bottom one so i just set that to default if you want the current one of course you can reset everything back to default which reset everything to default just enable that and it'll reset everything back to default this is now the fast flag editor this is what we always had and i think it's if it's your first time i'll show you a big warning of course use this with caution and yeah you can add new fast flags you can show the preset fast flags and you can export the json and stuff like that so to change what i just showed with the core gui to hide it if you're in the block shark group you go to the fast flag editor you go to show preset flags and in d i think it's defend can hide gui group id you double click this and then you edit this and input your group id which would be on the top of the URL when you're in a group. So it could be your group, it could be any group that you're in. Change this to that and press save. And when you go into a game, you can use the shortcuts that are given on the Boxart website, which I'll also link in the description below. So you can disable the GUI features and have it look phenomenal. This means that you can change this to any group that you're in, so you don't necessarily have to join the block strap group. All right, now let's go back to the navigation menus. Now we have appearance. This has always been here. You can have the global theme for the theme for block strap, which would be light, dark, or system default, which is basically whichever one your system has. The language, you can have it to system default, which is choose your system's language or choose whichever language that is translated here i believe the new languages are malaysian and like another language here you have the boot bootstrapper um, launch menu so the style i chose it to be fake bifron personally i like the big bifron one fake bifron one of course you can change this to whichever one you want but i personally like fake bifron as you can see here it will show you buy from a roblox company that fake buy from launcher that people talked about back then the roblox logo i just like it because it's rounded corners it's black it's simple it's easy so um yeah of course you can have your own icon here as well if you want and yeah that's the appearance next up is the shortcuts now this is where you can have the old shortcut menu back 
So if you want to have the play Roblox shortcut and stuff like that, instead of just opening the singular lock drop menu and then clicking launch Roblox, you can definitely do that by enabling this and it'll show up on your desktop. Next up is the block strap setting itself. So automatically update block strap, enable that, it'll automatically up update block strap to the latest version. And this is a new addition that's on by default, but you can absolutely disable it if you want to, which is sending analytics. Now, you might be wondering, okay, block strap is now getting my information, right? They're getting my Roblox account. What's happening? Why are they getting analytics? No. The analytics is anonymized, first of all, so it'll be sent to Blockstrap servers, to, Beats, to Pizza Boxer and the team anonymously, so they don't know who you are, they just know that they got that information. They just know that they got that information, and they would use that information for different things, which I'll show you in just a moment. Right? Now we have a new setting right here that you can see. Just test mode. This is a new setting as well. This is the last setting inside of the box trap menu. You click it and, it is, and you can see that it says that the test mode makes it easier to test your settings and how it will affect Roblox. So if you change some settings and you're scared if it's going to break your client or stuff like that, you can enable test mode and it'll automatically open Roblox. And when you close the settings and reopen settings after closing Roblox, it'll disable the test mode. All right, we've got through everything in the block strap menu itself. Now let's talk about the changes that have been made, including the privacy policy with the analytics. So let's go through some changes that has happened. In version 2.8.0, you will see the block strap has changed. The menu, the icon has changed. The menu has certainly changed like I showed you. And the font has changed with its own new icon. This is an article made a few days ago, I think a week ago, not a few days ago, a week ago, that is on the Blockstrap GitHub repository that basically says the upcoming changes to 2.8.0, which is released yesterday or October 15th. But you can see that it's new branding, so it's a new logo. And also you can see that Blockstrap is migrated to Blockstrap Labs. What that means is if you go to github.com slash pizza boxer slash blockstrap, it will now redirect you to blockstrap labs slash blockstrap. But also if you type in github, but also if you type in github.com slash blockstrap labs slash blockstrap, then it'll take you to this exact repository. So it's the same thing. This redirects you to this. And if you go here, then It'll also work that way as well. Go next, you see that this is a website. This is the only official website of Blockstrap. This is maintained by the Blockstrap team and Pizza Boxer. And this is blockstraplabs.com. All the official links and everything I've talked about in this video will be in the description below. So only follow everything that's in the description. If anybody tells you to go to blockstrap.org, blockstrap.dev, that's all false. That's all fake information. It's a scam, potential scam, and it might take your Roblox account. So only go to blockstraplabs.com. All right, now let's go to the change logs in version 2.8.0. You can see, like I told you, that analytics was enabled by default, and you can disable this right then and there. And then like Pizza Boxer says that this version of Blockstrap, in his opinion, is actually usable. So this is basically like a 1.0 version. It's like it got out of beta type thing. So, yeah. Right, we can see the features. Ability to view your game history, allowing you to see a summary of your play session, play session and quickly rejoin servers. You can see that, like I said, also with the rich presence in the integrations tab, that you can show what Roblox account you're playing on and a test mode that allows you to test configure settings before it affects Roblox with its client and you can now set launch data for invite deep links for 
your games, your experiences on Roblox if you're a developer, which is very good because this will allow you to set something like if somebody clicks on someone's Discord profile and they join a game through there with the activity joining, you can basically have analytics of launch data of that. So you can see if somebody joins through Discord, you can have them join the same team or something like that as well. Here are other changes. I will roughly go through this because there's a lot. Lockstrap verifies that Roblox launches properly. Reporting on GitHub issues will now not only give the dialog of the issue that's occurring, but also a log file included. And it'll warn you if you have unsafe changes, etc, etc, etc. Again, I'll leave this in the description below. Changes. Blockstrap menu is now called Blockstrap settings. Or just settings. And the Blockstrap shortcut is cut to just Blockstrap. No, not Play Roblox or Blockstrap menu. And that Blockstrap installs Roblox into a static Roblox and player folder instead of changing the versions folder every time Roblox updates and there's a new version, etc, etc. And basically everything that I went through. So Fast Flags is now changed to Engine Settings and Discord Rich Presence no longer just displays the word playing, but shows the game name and all of that as well. Bug fixes. You can see the bug fixes right here. You can pause to read or you can go to the description. In the, you can go to the link in the description. And they removed the advanced graphics quality slider, which is the one where you can set from 1 to 10. It's now 1 to 20. It's that slider where it's additional quality settings because there's bugs on them. And then of course, like I said, localization, there's Malay and Czech, now supported languages and some other languages are removed because of lack of translations and you can contribute to become a translator for block trap by clicking the link here all right now comes with the analytical data of what block trap sends or what they collect so like i said earlier it's not collecting your roblox accounts or anything it's collecting like what's shown here, Blockstrap installation states. So if you install, uninstall, or upgrade Blockstrap, it gets recorded. This is just so they can have general usage analytics to know what users do, how many people download Blockstrap, uninstall Blockstrap, etc., etc. And Roblox channel enrollment. So if you enroll in a Roblox channel, Blockstrap will record it when launching. So this is like if you go and choose a roblox development channel for example a b testing channel not the live channel not the official one that everybody has box trap will record that to see if they will get any information and insight on engine features that roblox are working on and rolling out and if people are interested in this then they might make this data public which i believe that people should be interested because who wouldn't want to know more engine features and features Roblox are working on behind the scenes, right? So, for me personally, I would want Blockstrap, Pizza Boxer, and the team to have this data public. That's just my that's just my my opinion. I, I want it public. And then package download states. So if the game client downloads and uh, the game client is distributed in packages and they collect data points on if the downloads were successful, if they fail, and how they did. So if it failed, if it worked properly, if it had issues with configuring or it worked, but there's certain types of stuff, stuff like that. And they're using to figure out how to make the code to install Roblox more efficient, which is absolutely phenomenal. You love to see. And with every point that they collect, they will record information about the version of Blockstrap that you're using. So if you're using 2.8.0, which is what this is right now, then they start collecting it from here on out and say that it's from version XYZ. And you can always come back to the privacy policy to look and see if they will make any more changes, such as if they'll 
collect more data or remove certain data, stuff like that. You can always come back here again. It'll be in the description below. Right. Here comes with the game history viewing, which I love. So now in the current session, so if you leave Roblox and you go back to the home page and stuff like that on the desktop app, I believe if you exit out of Roblox completely, this doesn't save. But if you go to the desktop app home page and stuff like that, then this will show up. It's a game history, which will record all your latest sessions, all the games that you've played recently on that current session. And if you disconnect for whatever reason and stuff like that, you can rejoin that specific server right then and there. It'll be a Windows tray menu on the bottom right of your screen. And then you would right click and then you would right click it to see more options. And then you will right click the game history and it will show all the games that you've played. It will show all the games that you've played and it will allow you to rejoin it if you can rejoin it. And again, here is the launch data for developers. If any developers want to implement this inside of your experiences, this is how you would do it. This is also how you would change the rich presence to, of your game to Discord. All right, that would be it for Blockstrap version 2.8.0. If, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments below but i'm not an expert i love blockstrap i've used blockstrap for a long time over a year way back then but if there's any technical issues don't come to me please go to the issues tab inside the github repository and report it to the team so they can handle it because i don't work with blockstrap i'm not an official member of the team i don't know anything technical but if there's any questions on how features are being used or like the settings what does this setting do if you don't understand then comment down below and i'll try my best to help you there again all official links will be in the description any websites or links that claim to be from blockstrap and pizza box are on the team but it's not blockstraplabs.com or blockstrap labs on github or even pizza boxer on github or pizza boxer dot xyz if it's not one of these domains or repositories it's not the official the official blockstrap application all right hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys in the next one peace